So, Dr. Schulz, what is oligometastatic prostate cancer? Well, um, metastatic means something that's jumped outside the prostate, uh, perhaps into a lymph node or bone. Those are the most common sites of spread. Less commonly, prostate cancer can spread to the liver or to the lung. Uh, thankfully, it's pretty rare for it to spread to other parts of the body. The uh, word oligo in Greek means few. And uh, historically, when our scanning technology was poor, if you found any spread of cancer outside the prostate, that meant that there's a lot of other hidden metastatic disease. And so people didn't try and make a distinction of whether there were a couple metastatic spots or whether there were numerous metastatic spots. It was all bad. It just meant that the situation was um, uh, very dire and hopeless in many cases. The idea of oligometastatic is that especially with the advent of better scanning, uh, having only a couple metastatic spots actually is nowhere near as serious as having many metastatic spots. Now we have treatments that can be directed against those metastatic spots. Now we have scans that are much more accurate, and it's possible that those are the only metastatic spots. And in some uh, situations, perhaps those people can still be cured with aggressive combination therapy and, uh, say, radiation to the metastatic spots. So oligometastatic disease has really come uh, on um, to the forefront of, of uh, medical awareness over the last five to 10 years due to the improvements in technology and now a better understanding that some of these people that do have metastatic disease may still be curable. So I've heard the term a scopal effect mentioned when it comes to spot radiation. Can you explain what this is? Uh, one reason that cancer occurs is that it has so many similarities to our normal tissues that our immune systems don't recognize it and get rid of it. Cancer cells apparently can throw up sort of a cloaking shield around their tumors and uh, the immune system just passes by and doesn't attack it and, and get rid of it. So this uh, can be overcome sometimes by uh, killing a metastatic site, say with beam radiation, and the dying cells then, which have been killed by the radiation, uh, release their internal proteins, their unique uh, characteristic signatures that the immune system can then get in there and uh, detect this for the first time. And then uh, swim around in the rest of the body, the immune system then uh, goes and attacks spots of cancers in other parts of the body. So this has been observed where people have had, a, say, a spot on their leg uh, zapped with some radiation, and another spot, well-known, say, in the lung, shrinks, even though that spot in the lung was never hit with radiation. So this is not something that happens universally. Uh, it's not even necessarily commonly. Uh, probably only about, oh, 15% of the time do you get a, a measurable scopal effect, as you're describing. But when it happens, uh, you've, uh, the radiation is actually activating the immune system to attack the cancer in other parts of the body. So I know we've talked a lot about PSMA, which is a PET scan that specifically shows prostate cancer. So how, when it comes to oligometastatic disease, how does a PSMA scan come into play? Well, the PSMA PET scans are finding the cancer at a far earlier stage. And so for the first time, if a PET scan a PSMA PET scan is showing, say, only one or two metastatic sites, there's a much greater likelihood, not guaranteed, but much greater likelihood that those are the only metastatic sites. And of course, that gives hope that by uh, treating those sites, perhaps with radiation, that we may be able to cure these individuals. The idea of treating metastatic sites with older scans, bone scans, uh, CAT scans, MRIs, uh, even axiom PET scans, uh, was certainly being implemented, but with a lot lower expectations because we knew that those scans were more likely to miss other smaller metastatic sites that weren't showing up on the scan. That can, ha again, that can happen with PSMA PET scans as well. There can be additional disease that's not being detected, but uh, it's far less likely than uh, with the older scans, the older bone scans that we used to use. How do you treat oligometastatic disease? Are there several treatments? Is there one treatment? So I would say that spot uh, and surgeons will, if they find uh, oligometastatic disease in the lymph nodes of the pelvis, for example, will want to do surgery. I'm not a big fan of that, but it is being done. Radiation is non-invasive. It's equally effective, perhaps more effective than surgery because they can treat a field area. 
uh, whereas the surgeons just go in and pluck out the, the um, metastatic uh, lymph nodes. R so radiation uh, is uh, kind of the backbone of treating uh, oligometastatic disease with, say, SBRT, short radiation give, given over uh, uh, maybe a 10-day period. The use of ancillary systemic therapies, hormone therapy, chemotherapy, immune therapy, on top of the radiation treatment to the known sites is a strong consideration because if there are other smaller metastatic sites that aren't showing up on the scan, uh, they are by definition very, very small and perhaps they can be eliminated with chemotherapy, hormone therapy, or combinations of these things. So it's very natural, especially if the patient's in a younger age group, to be thinking about not only radiating the oligometastatic sites, but giving additional uh, combination systemic therapy for uh, insurance against the possibility of another smaller spot that wasn't detected, but maybe small enough to be eradicated with hormone therapy or chemotherapy, and, and thus Im improving the cure rate of the whole process. So what about Sofigo? Is that also a treatment for oligometastatic? In theory, it could be used for that purpose, and I've seen it uh, done on a couple occasions, maybe with some benefit. I tend to think of Zofigo more for the patients uh, that have too many spots to selectively radiate. With oligometastatic disease, we define more than five metastatic sites as not being oligometastatic and, or diffuse systemic uh, metastatic disease. And uh, that seems like a more natural type of profile for someone to use Zofigo, which is an injected radium that circulates in, and uh, radiates all the spots in the bones that have cancer. Uh, the uh, Zofigo doesn't work for lymph nodes, but it works nicely for bone. And uh, if there's a limited number of spots in the bones, it seems more natural to do uh, beam radiation, in my thinking, rather than expose the whole body to radiation with Zofigo. But uh, it can be done for oligometastatic disease. There really isn't any clear research showing how beneficial it would be in that setting. Earlier you mentioned that you know a spot has to be big enough to show up on a PSMA scan. So what, what is the size that it would actually show up at that point? Well, we have to remember that PSMA PET scans light up about 90% of prostate cancers. So there are um, less common variants of prostate cancer that don't light up perhaps about 10% of prostate cancers don't light up with PSMA. So PSMA is not perfect in that regard. But uh, the density of uh, PSA, PSMA molecules on the surface of the cancer cells will partially dictate whether it's going to light up on a PSMA PET scan when it gets very small. But uh, they have detected spots down to diameters as small as 2 millimeters, which is huge advance compared to traditional uh, CAT scans and MRIs, where unless, say, a lymph node showed a metastatic site that was uh, 10 uh, millimeters or half, half uh, a centimeter, not a half centimeter, but a full centimeter, um, they wouldn't be called as metastatic sites. So uh, the um, PSMA PET scan is a whole new realm of sensitivity for finding even uh, very, very small uh, metastatic sites. So what about age? Does that have a factor in how you would treat oligometastatic disease? Uh, yeah, age is a fascinating thing because men uh, who even are metastatic, uh, let's say a limited number of metastatic lesions, can live for you know, 5, 10, 15 years with, uh, with simple hormone treatments. So there's always a uh, you know, question in terms of what, uh, what of many options is going to be best for someone who is more elderly. Modern radiation treatments have become so... Um, tolerable in the hands of experts that uh, these days will tend to be thinking about just zapping the limited number of spots and see how people do when they're elderly and perhaps will hold off on the hormone treatments and the chemo treatments for those individuals. But there's always an option of using something like low-dose Casadex, uh, which is quite effective and will keep the disease in check for a number of years. Uh, it's often well tolerated. Things that are happening due to the, all the advances in our understanding of the disease and with many new therapies coming out, better, better methods to know what's really going on with these accurate scans opens up um, a lot of new options for people. We don't have the same specter of, uh, you know, the imminency of we're all going to die if we don't do some uh, really aggressive thing immediately. And uh, that, uh, that mindset becomes far more uh, relevant in you know, people when they get in their 80s. What about cure rates? Is it possible to have an absolute cure when it comes to oligo? Absolutely, yes. Uh, we have patients that have had uh, um, spots on their bones that were diagnosed uh, 10 years ago. 
Uh, usually it's a limited number, one or two spots, that were treated uh, with radiation and um, ancillary hormones and a short course of chemotherapy who are in complete remission today, who have uh, recovered their testosterone levels, have gone back to a completely normal lifestyle. I wish it happened in everybody. It certainly doesn't. I would guess that the chances with the older scans, we didn't have PSMA PET scans back then, uh, but we would uh, say maybe 10 or 15 percent of the patients that had one or two meta metastatic lesions have had uh, enjoyed very long-term durable responses. Thanks for watching. If you would like more information about prostate cancer, you can go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new prostate cancer videos every week. And go ahead and visit our website, pcri.org. We have tons of information on prostate cancer that will help you.